So here's a question that I want you to just think about your instinctive answer to. Can we separate art from its artists? And in doing so, should we boycott art by problematic people? I think some people come to this problem from a very theoretical standpoint. They talk about things like the death of the author. And I think although, yes, you can still believe in the idea that the art and the artist are separate in terms of the artist's intentions, not necessarily being the entirety of the work of art itself, I think that the financial, social and power structure ties between an artist and a piece of work are very much real. But I believe that that decision that you made was based on a combination of three things. Profit, principle and perception. So first of all, profit. Literally, will that person profit from you consuming their art? Let's take an example. There is a YouTuber who has been convicted of multiple rapes. If you watch their videos, which have ads enabled, and you buy their merch, you know that you are supporting them financially. But if we think about a writer who was a domestic abuser but died 50 years ago, if your decision is purely made because of profit, it won't matter if you consume their material because they have no way of gaining from it. Something in between those two examples might be a singer who recently went on racist tirades across social media you might not buy their album, but if it was purely about profit, you might say that it was okay to pirate their music. The second thing to have taken into consideration is principle, your principles. It might be within your own internal moral code as a point of principle to not consume this art, regardless or not of whether they will physically, literally, financially profit from it. If you're acting purely on principle, then you wouldn't even pirate someone's music, even though you know that they won't directly financially gain from it. One reason for acting on principle rather than straight profit is although someone might not gain in the short term, they might end up gaining in the long term. Accepting the work of someone who does things that you consider to be wrong potentially sends the message to people that those things are, at least in part, acceptable. And the third example is perception. For a great many people in the world, I think this is probably the main reason why they come to that instinctual answer. And it's basically just how you personally perceive it, whether that's consciously or un unconsciously. Sometimes things just feel wrong. It means that emotionally, even art that you once loved can become tainted by the thing that you know about the artist. It means that even if someone like me reasons the idea of how the art and artist are or are not linked, you just feel the way you feel about it. Or maybe the example that you're thinking of isn't morally black and white to you. So how can we sort through the things that are in a morally gray area? For me, it hinges on two questions. One, what do they do? And two, what is the context of their art to the people around them? First of all, what do they do? So someone has been convicted of murder, rape, molestation. I think we can all agree shitty things to do. But then we have to look at other scenarios. What about people who have only been accused and haven't been proven to be guilty? What about something that happened 20, 50 years ago? What about attitudes that people hold that they haven't necessarily acted on? And what about the context of that behaviour or attitude? If someone lived 100 years ago, should we hold them to account for their thoughts that were probably very commonplace at the time, but that we now see as wrong? And number two, what is the context that they are in relation to others? It's much easier to answer these questions in relation to solo artists or people that we see as having the singular possession of a piece of work. You may be able to divorce that homophobic author's views from the latest novel that you want to go out and buy and read, but that money is still going to benefit a homophobic author. But what about a film with a problematic person in it? Your effort to boycott is also boycotting the livelihoods of the hundreds of people who also worked on that piece of art. Now you may say, well, maybe they didn't know about what that person had done. And for the case of films that came before they started working with them, yeah, that might be the case. So do you say you're gonna consume the art from before the person did the thing or before people knew that the person did the thing? And what about people who are forced to work with these problematic people? A very modern example of this would be the example of Kesha. Do you just not support any work that Kesha has done with the producer that she was forced to work with? Even more than that, and I think this is something that's become increasingly relevant, especially with recent news around people like Harvey Weinstein, is that your support maintains the social power of that person and their ability to work within that industry. In cases of things like sexual harassment, coercion within creative industries, it is that very power and support which allows them to do the awful thing in the first place. And twofold, the power also helps them get away with it. Ultimately, the answer to these questions is going to be personal, but I do think it's important to think about whether these personal boycotts may simply be doing something for you 
the individual to feel better about yourself and not actually doing anything to dismantle the structures which are allowing these things to happen in the first place. So if you are someone who feels strongly about boycotting a piece of artwork made by someone who's done something that you think is reprehensible, I would say maybe go one step further as well and try and support people who are attempting to make those industries a better place for everyone involved. So I hope you found that video thought provoking at least. If you have any thoughts about this, which I'm sure you do, please leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to my Patreon so you can help support me make these videos along with my social media links so you can find me all over the internet. And I'll tell you, see you next time. Bye.